cute, cuddly, squeaking little guinea pigs. Who could resist owning one or eating one? Growing up, I had several guinea pigs. Everyone in my family loved guinea pigs and thought they made terrific pets. In fact, several years ago, my sister had a guinea pig that was pregnant and delivered by C-section because of a complication. Hi, my name is Emily Hurlston, and despite what I've just told you, my goal over the next few minutes is going to be to convince you that eating guinea pig meat, or cooey as it's called in South America, is an acceptable practice. In fact, I would assert that beyond being beneficial for South American cultures, it should be considered here in the United States and other places in the world. I will be sharing information about the efficiency of raising guinea pigs for meat, the health benefits, and some philosophical arguments that will leave little room for us to dismiss this practice. Guinea pigs are docile animals, making them easy to raise. But beyond that, they can be raised efficiently. According to Jason Woods, a program assistant with Heifer International, guinea pigs are twice as efficient at, as cows at turning food like hay and compost scraps into meat. To render a pound of meat, a cow may require eight pounds of feed. A guinea pig will only need four. Guinea pigs are also prolific at breeding. For nutritional needs, a family of four will require between 160 and 200 guinea pigs a year. This number can be produced by starting out with just 22 guinea pigs, 20 females and 2 males. According to Dean Green, writing for Critter Cuisine, if not eaten, those same 22 guinea pigs can multiply into 6,000 guinea pigs in just two years. In a time where concerns over the environment are at the forefront, Brian Nelson, writing in an article titled, Why More People in the U.S. Are Eating Guinea Pigs, tells us that the very small environmental impact of guinea pigs is worth noting. Guinea pigs can be raised in a small yard or even inside, as opposed to the acres of land required for raising cattle. Consider the small carbon footprint of guinea pigs when compared with cattle. Cows produce large amounts of methane, which is not good for the environment. Cattle farming can also lead to water pollution, erosion, and loss of forest land. The efficiency of breeding and raising guinea pigs for meat is evident, but now let's consider the health benefits. In Peru, guinea pigs have been raised as a source of protein for over 7,000 years. In his article, Guinea Pigs, Small Livestock with Big Potential, Eduardo Rossi asserts that guinea pig meat is over 20% protein. This percentage is higher than that of chicken, pork, lamb, or beef. Guinea pig meat is a low-fat and low-cholesterol option, too. It's leaner than most other, feeds, most other meats with only an 8% fat content. Some other health benefits include richness in omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin B. There's even been some scientific assertion that a cooey diet may contain some keys to a cancer cure. A past chair of pathology at Cornell University in New York, Dr. John Kidd noted that certain groups of mice that should have been experiencing a fatal phenotype from malignant tumors remained healthy when injected with guinea pig blood. In a second study, also at Cornell, Dr. John Broom provided further explanation. Guinea pig serum contains an enzyme called L-asparaginase, which breaks down the body's asparagine. Cells, including cancer cells, need asparagine to grow. Thus, breaking those down may halt the growth of some cancer cells. Assimilating guinea pig meat into your diet definitely seems to have some positive health benefits. Now let's consider some questions from more of a philosophical standpoint. Is it acceptable to eat rodents? Is it acceptable to eat pets? Where do we draw the line when making these decisions? Capybaras, squirrels, guinea pigs, even rats are eaten regularly around the world. Remember, when these animals are raised for meat, we have more control over what they eat and the diseases they might carry. Any animal can be a poor meat source if not controlled. 
We had chickens a few years ago, and we observed them eating all kinds of things, from mice to assorted insects. I could have never eaten one of the chickens we raised, but of course I eat chicken from Publix all the time. If raised in the U.S. for meat, guinea pigs would be held to the same FDA standards as other sources of meat. Most of us have had some experience with the interchangeability between animals as pets and as meat. A Korean friend of mine living in the U.S. had a pet dog several years ago that developed an illness. When her husband took the dog to the vet, they found out that it would be very expensive for the treatment. My friend's husband told the vet, my wife is Korean. She will cook this dog and eat it before she pays that much. Of course she didn't, and that sounds cruel to us, but we must take into consideration our own personal and cultural bias in making decisions about which animals are edible. My kids raised pigs, not real pig, not guinea pigs, real pigs, for 4-H for many years. They were their pets, but in the end they were sold to be butchered and consumed. Similarly, sheep, ducks, goats, and other animals can be both cute and lovable pets and also a good dinner. When we remove cultural norms, it seems that we are only left with emotional arguments for much of the standard we use in deciding what to eat. In conclusion, we've determined that guinea pigs are an efficient, environmentally conscious, healthy meat source. We've also explored some of the philosophical arguments that give credence to guinea pig meat as a viable alternative to the standard meat sources we've come to rely on in the U.S. In my opinion, I don't think we can make harsh judgments about what people in other cultures raise and eat for meat. And I think when arguments about efficiency and health and environmental benefits are proven, we also must be open to exploring new possibilities for our own diets and cultural standards, even cute little guinea pigs. Thank you.